I kind of fell in love with a man half my age. Now, let me guess, every woman in the room is really squicked out right now, right? So were all my female friends. All my male friends were like, go for it. <laughs> anyway, I met him um, in his hometown. At that point, he was just a university student. And he just had this light, you know? And I found out that he's been a professional performer since he was 16. So I went and saw his show. And he was brilliant. He had this confidence and this poise. And it, I felt like I was watching a star being born. So I do what I do as a theater producer. I took him out for coffee. And we talked like on each other forever. And I went back home. And I was living in Brampton. And I could not get this guy out of my mind. It drove me crazy. I was doing uh, some vocal classes. We were doing a songwriting class. I'm writing bad lyrics about him. I'm writing bad poetry about him. I am doing a performance, and I, I had already chosen the song, and everybody was like, why did you choose that song? I said, I don't know. I'm just feeling pulled to this song. After I met him, I understood why. Because the song has a lyric like, I know I don't know you, but I want you so bad. Yeah, that was, that was my life. Uh, and then, that same performance, by the way, that same evening, after I finished, I take a bus to Hamilton to go see a friend of mine doing a show in the Hamilton Fringe, which actually I just finished myself. And who should be coming to that same performance? You got it, that young man, he was there. And I was only one seat left when he arrived and it was next to me. It, yeah, it felt faded, honest to God. But it was a little weird because it's like, he's in university. I'm almost 50. This is a problem. <laughs> Especially worried about the whole power dynamic issue, right? Because I have all this life experience and he doesn't. And it would be so easy for me to just kind of, you know, to do some dragging along. And he would not even know I'd done it. So I was kind of trying to figure this out. Then I read a Dan Savage column, Savage Love. Has anybody ever read Savage Love? A few people. Yeah, Dan has... a. Dan has um, a style, let's just say. He's not your average advice columnist. And he was answering a letter from a guy who had a much younger partner. And Dan said that the, he should invoke what's called the campfire rule. Now, does anybody know what that is? The campfire rule is that you leave it better than you found it. So in a, so in a relationship context, this means no playing mind games, no messing them up. You want to leave them so happy that they met you that you changed their lives and they look back at you fondly. So I found a bit of peace in that. I went, okay, you know what? I'm just not going to do anything. I'm going to let him drive the bus. If he's interested, cool. Hopefully he's interested. But otherwise, I just won't do anything. And it was easy for the first few years because we lived in different cities, so I didn't see him all that often. He went on, he grew up, and then he hit his 25th birthday. And I had been waiting for his 25th birthday. <laughs> Because I have this philosophy that men, once they hit 25, are fair game to have a relationship with. Because before that point, they're still figuring out who they are. But by the time you hit 25, you have a pretty good idea of where you're going. So he's doing a show. And I'm deciding, OK, I'll ask him if he wants a birthday kiss, right? Really innocuous. It could be fun. I made up a menu of all the various kisses he could choose from. And I didn't honestly expect him to say yes. And he does. And not only that, he tells me I can choose the menu item. <laughs> and, and, yeah, I chickened out, OK? I chickened out. So I just gave him a friendly kiss. But let me tell you, like, he goes drives off with his brother to like, you know, have somebody's birthday. And I am like literally bouncing for like the next half an hour. I am like giddy like a school girl. I have no idea where this is coming from. I'm like, oh my god, are you kidding me? But that's what he brings out in me. He brings out this kind of innocence. He brings me back to this woman I was before life threw all this crap at me. I've, through him, I've discovered this young woman that I thought I had lost forever. And then as it turns out, a few months later, he and I work on a project together. And I find out he's dating a much younger woman. Yeah, she's 18. So, 
So if you take a look at it, the spread is about the same if you add in maturity, right? <laughs> so I decide, okay, I'll tell him how I'm feeling because basically I'm working on this project. I'm tired of hiding this anyway. And besides, he can learn something from me, right? So I start telling him about how I feel and, and the process that I've just told you. And before I get to say campfire rule, he says it first. And he thanks me for telling him how I feel about him. And he says, you know, usually people don't say that. And I'm really glad you did. And he treats me with such kindness and such care. And I was, like, expecting rejection. And to this day, I'm still incredibly grateful for that. And while he's never actually been into me the way I'm into him, and that's ha thankfully has faded over time, but we still have this really, really beautiful friendship. And um, he's done favors for me, I've done favors for him, and it was a really good process for me to learn to desire and to own my desires without expecting them to be fulfilled and to be in a receptive state of mind rather than trying to make things happen. These were very helpful lessons for me to learn. And I'm very thankful to him for that. And then there was this other guy. He's a Dutchman. We had this really intense six month long distance relationship which brought up every single fear that I had ever had about a relationship. We pushed each other's buttons, but I know it sounds awful, right? But it's actually incredibly healing because we had met when I had been in Amsterdam. And when we came back, we started talking, and it felt like we were in the same room with each other. So it became a very healing experience because we knew from the get-go that this was about us finding our stuff. And of course, it ended because he met a woman closer to home, and guess what? She's older, and actually apparently a lot like me. Anyway, but one thing he said sticks with me. He said, you are an initiator of young men. Now, what he meant by that is there's, certain, there's stories of certain tribes where a woman in the tribe, generally married, had a few kids, or a group of women are designated to help train the young men to take care, to please, to please their women before they get married. And he saw me in this tradition. And I'm kind of thinking, he's right. Because, like, right now, I've got guys coming up the wazoo wanting to go out with me. I can't tell you. I think young men are really gravitating to the wisdom that older women have and the life experience because they're learning about relationships through porn and they're learning about it through TV shows where everything's really messed up. And what they, they tell me over and over what they appreciate about me was that I know who I am. I know what I want. And I'm not afraid to say it. So... Yeah, there's going to be some people who abuse that dynamic, like in any, di in any situation. And yeah, there's this whole subsection of people who want to do like this daddy baby girl or mommy son thing, which really honestly squirts me out. But as long as it's consensual, whatever you guys want to do. However, I've met a group of women like me who see our relationships with younger men as a sacred trust. And if you get down to it, like we're all on the journey, right? And when flesh touches flesh, the years melt away. And when soul meets soul, age means nothing. And as we move, or at least I hope we move, toward the society where we see our similarities more than our differences, I honestly think age will cease to be an issue. So I'm proud to be part of that vanguard. I am proud to be a cougar. Thank you.